Hey guys, so I am very excited to film this video for you today. This is my first video of 2022, and I thought what better way to kick it off than to devote a video to Pantone's 2022 Color of the Year, Very Perry. So the way I structured this video is uh, I'll explain a little bit about Pantone and uh, their inspiration for this color of the year. And then I will do some uh, swatches of some different makeup items that kind of embody the very peri color. And then at the end, I'll demo this makeup so you can see all these products in action. So uh, I hope that sounds good to you. If it does, please keep watching. Okay, so if you're not familiar with what Pantone is and uh, what the color of the year even is, Pantone describes themselves as the global color authority and provider of professional color language standards and digital solutions for the design community. Uh, so basically that means that if someone in like one country says, I want this product to be Pantone XYZ, uh, then the other person that is making it for them will know exactly what color they mean and there won't be any differences in which color red, for example, that they uh, choose. So that's basically it in a nutshell. It's just, it's kind of a shorthand for knowing exactly what color it is. So I think since 2000, Pantone has been identifying a color of the year, which is basically a color that they think will kind of inspire or kind of dictate certain trends in home design and um, beauty and, and all sorts of different areas. Uh, so for 2022, as I said, it is the color Very Peri. So not to be confused with Nando's Peri Peri, it is Very Peri, uh, which is short for Periwinkle. Uh, and that is Pantone 17-3938, if you were curious. And apparently this is the first time in the history of the Color of the Year program that they've created an entirely new shade, which is kind of interesting. So they describe Very Peri as a dynamic periwinkle blue hue with a vivifying violet red undertone. And uh, I did look at an article that Allure Magazine wrote about Pantone's color of the year and Allure did identify some products that they thought kind of embodied this Very Peri color. Uh, and I do have a few of those to swatch for you later on in the video. Uh, but Allure basically summed up Pantone's description as blurple. So there you go. So uh, Pantone's description here, it says, blending the faithfulness and constancy of blue with the energy and excitement of red, this happiest and warmest of all the blue hues introduces an empowering mix of newness, displaying a carefree confidence and a daring curiosity that animates our creative spirit Inquisitive and intriguing Pantone 17-3938, <laughs> sounds like a droid or something. Very Perry helps us to embrace this altered landscape of possibilities, which is probably the most euphemistic way I've ever heard post-pandemic life described. Opening us up to a new vision as we rewrite our lives. Rekindling gratitude for some of the qualities that blue represents complemented by a new perspective that resonates today, Very Perry places the future ahead in a new light. And I think their executive director of the Pantone Color Institute said, as we move into a world of unprecedented change, the selection of Very Perry brings a novel perspective and vision of the trusted and beloved blue color family. I didn't know blue had such a reputation, but I guess. Encompassing the qualities of the blues, yet at the same time possessing a violet red undertone, Very Perry displays a sprightly, joyous attitude and dynamic presence that encourages courageous creativity and imaginative expression. So that's a lot to put on a color, but uh, there you go if you enjoy that kind of thing. And they do kind of break it down by category, so like home decor, etc. And in the category of beauty and hair, they say suggestive of personal inventiveness and daring imagination, Barry Perry makes a novel statement for eyes, nails, and especially in hair, and a variety of finishes and applications from glittery and glam to dusty matte. And I do have a variety of different uh, beauty finishes to share with you. So uh, before we get into the swatches here, I just thought I would kind of reminisce a little bit of some of the previous colors of the year. 
and uh, the first color of the year it looks like was in 2000 and that was the shade Cerulean and I need to go back and see when the Devil Wears Prada was made and its relation to that. What you don't know is that that sweater is not just blue, it's not turquoise, it's not lapis, it's actually cerulean. Anyway, so that was cerulean. And then jumping up ahead to, I think, 2012. Uh, and that was the shade Tangerine Tango. And that was the first year that I recall Sephora making a collection in collaboration with Pantone that kind of embodied some of those shades. I feel a bit like uh, Lisa Eldridge going into my makeup collection there. But uh, anyway, so uh, Sephora released a collection with Pantone and they did some lipsticks and I think nail polishes. Uh, so maybe I'll put more pictures on my Instagram. Uh, but I thought I would just show you this lipstick, which uh, just has a white outer case. Uh, but this is a orange lipstick, as you can tell, and this is the shade Tangerine Tango Cream. And it has a fun kind of uh, embossing on the actual lipstick bullet. So that was the shade, go ahead and swatch it. So that was the shade Tangerine Tango. I wouldn't wear this on my lips anymore, but I just kind of hold on to it for collector's purposes. And then the year after that was Emerald, uh, which Sephora might have done something with. And then the next year in 2014, it was the shade Radiant Orchid. And you can see with this uh, lipstick that they did have this kind of ombre Radiant Orchid, which is really pretty. So you can see it says Pantone and Sephora, and this was just kind of a smooth bullet on this one. So that was the shade Radiant Orchid. And then after that, it was the shade Marsala in 2015, which was kind of that like deep wine, oxblood type color. Uh, and then after that, it was, let's see, Serenity and Rose Quartz. I think that was the year they had both like a light blue and a light pink, which is always kind of dicey to me when they pick two colors, it's like, just pick one. Uh, and I think Sephora was still doing collections with them at that point. Uh, the next year was Greenery, and I can't quite recall. I wanna say they might've stopped their collaboration with Pantone that year or the next year, I can't quite remember. Uh, and side note, if you have watched any of my, like, what's my shade type videos, uh, I think when Sephora and Pantone were collaborating with each other, uh, that's when you could have that color IQ system, uh, which I dearly miss, and kind of similar to the way I described the Pantone system for like product manufacturing at the beginning, uh, that was a way that you could have a single number and be able to identify your shade in most every foundation that Sephora carried. So uh, for example, I know that I was 1R03 and I have lots of videos kind of breaking down what that means. Uh, but basically it was, you had like R numbers and you had yellow numbers and the lower that number, the more neutral. And then as you went out from the middle, uh, the more yellow or the more kind of red toned you were. And then it also had a scale from like one to 15 thereabouts. Um, so from one to 15, I was like three on the light to dark scale. So uh, basically two different components to that number. And yeah, you could type it in and it would generate a foundation match if there was one, or you could kind of figure out what was your closest match, which was really helpful. And if you went into store, they would actually have like a little device that they could hold up to your bare skin. It would take pictures and then it would spit out a number. Uh, so anyway, it was really great and I miss it, but uh, that is sadly no longer. So somewhere around here, they cut ties with Sephora. Uh, going up to, let's see, 2018 was the color Ultraviolet. And I know in that year that uh, Butter London collabed with them. So this is a nail polish in the shade Ultraviolet. So you can see it says Butter London plus Pantone. And that is the shade Ultraviolet. So I know at least Butter London collabed with them in that year. And Butter London does make cosmetics, at least they used to. So I think I also have like an eyeliner in this color, that sort of thing. But nail polish definitely has more longevity to it. So it's always nice when you can pick up one of those um, products. 
Uh, and then following Ultraviolet, we had Living Coral, which was a coral, Classic Blue, and then I think last year in 2021, it was Ultimate Gray and Illuminating, which I think was a yellow color. So they went back to the two color um, option for that year. So obviously when, you know, Sephora started clouding with them in like 2012 or whatever, I was excited and oranges aren't generally my color, but it's definitely a color that is fairly easy to wear for makeup. Uh, Radiant Orchid was great because that was that kind of fuchsia color. Um, a nice bright purple is always, you know, pretty easy, at least on the nails and the eyes, I guess. Um, so yeah, so I was really um, excited to see this color of Very Perry because I think it's really fun and because it has that kind of almost blue and purple shift. I think it's it's a really fun fun color to incorporate because uh, as you'll see from the swatches again, different brands will interpret Periwinkle as either being more blue or more purple. And one final thing before I jump off here, um, I just wanted to mention that obviously fashion and clothing is another way to incorporate uh, very Perry. So um, this sweater that I'm wearing uh, from Free People, the shade is actually called Blue Egret. Uh, so I just wanted to quickly mention that as another way to incorporate a uh, very Perry into your wardrobe for 2022. <laughs> Still feels weird to say, doesn't it? Okay, so I think that is it as far as an introduction. Let's take a look at some swatches. Okay, so the first product I'm going to swatch here is the Janessa Myricks Twin Flames in the shade Amour. And they describe this as a wisteria, purple, and periwinkle. So the base is not uh, super opaque in color, but hopefully you can see that reflect in the tube. So this is a multi-chrome pigment for eyes and face. Okay, so next up I have two of these, the Big Eye Pencils from J-Cat Beauty. And these were two uh, that Allure mentioned in their article. This is the shade Violet and this is the shade Vanilla Sky. So we'll go ahead and swatch these. That is the shade Violet, and this is the shade Vanilla Sky. One is definitely more blue than the other. Okay, so next up I have a MAC shadow. This is in their uh, Powder Kiss formula, and the shade is uh, such a tool. Okay, so I'll just swatch this on a bare arm. Definitely more of a powdery blue. So Mac describes this as a light periwinkle blue. Okay, so next up I have a few shades here from Lethal Cosmetics. Uh, this one shade called Altitude is one that is uh, specifically uh, described as a pastel periwinkle with a matte finish. Uh, and these other two just seem to kind of reflect the shade, even though I think they're called um, something different. So this is the shade Synth, and this is the shade Stargaze. So... I filmed a couple of lethal videos over the summer, if you are curious. So yeah, so they do have a sticker. So this one is Stargaze. I'll just pop these into here for now for ease of swatching. And stick this MAC shadow in there for the time being as well. And if you've been kind of turned off from lethal by they're shipping because they are based in Germany. Camera Ready Cosmetics also carries them. So that's where I purchased uh, these shades here. Uh, and I did set the white balance before I started filming, but I think it's just a little hard sometimes to capture 
color accurately, especially when they're these kind of shifty shades. Okay, so let's do altitude, which is more of a blue periwinkle, I would say. And then I think this one was stargaze. So this is kind of more, obviously a shimmery blue. It's looking a little lighter, I think, on the screen than it is in person. And then this last one, which I think kind of, to me, embodies what Periwinkle is the most out of these. This is Synth. Because I think it has kind of that lilac lavender base, but then has that like blue shimmer running through it. So those are the three shades from Lethal Cosmetics. And then the last shadow I have to swatch is from the uh, ColourPop Nightmare Before Christmas palette, which I already swatched, I think, in my ColourPop video. Uh, so it's this one shade called Dr. Finkelstein here is what they call a periwinkle shade. And that one is definitely more on the purple side. And it looks like that palette is currently half off on the Ulta website. So you could pick that up for $11 if you so desired. Uh, and they call that shade a metallic deep periwinkle with a blue flip. So those are all the periwinkle eye colors I have to share with you. You know, these two are definitely the bluest. This is a darker blue, but it does have a little bit more purple in it. Uh, this one looks more true purple to me. I think these two have the most kind of iridescence to them where you get kind of a shift. And that, Danessa Myricks, by the way, seems set. There's a little bit more kind of blendability with the J-cap pencil still. Okay, so for lips, I only have a couple of things to show you because obviously blue is a less common color for the lips. Uh, so the first product is this Fenty Beauty Matte Moiselle in Ya Dig. And if you did want to really go in or you just wanted a blue lip color you could you could try that <laughs> um, I think these are possibly being discontinued so if you were interested in it I would recommend picking it up sooner rather than later and then slightly more wearable is the Pat McGrath uh, lip gloss in astral moon flower and because this is a gloss, it's going to be less opaque, obviously. So you kind of get a hint of blue sparkle, but it's not, it's not going to be as intense. And if I just kind of pat over here, You could definitely layer them if you wanted. So one more look. So just to run through some of the other eyeshadow colors that um, either I discovered or I think Allure mentioned. So Allure mentioned the Wet n Wild Mega Liner Liquid Eyeliner in the shade um, Voltage Blue, which looks pretty bright blue to me. Uh, there's also the Danessa Myricks Infinite Chrome Flakes in Moonlight, which is a cerulean blue with periwinkle reflex. Uh, every time I hear the word cerulean, I think of a Del Wars Prada. <laughs> um, 
There's the All That Glitters palette from Hip Dot. They have a shade called Pretty Girl, which is an iridescent periwinkle. I think that's an all glitter palette, as you would expect. Uh, ColourPop has a palette called Rumor Has It at Ulta. Uh, it's one of their five pans. And I think the middle shade here called Page Six is a deep matte periwinkle. And then uh, Morphe has a couple palettes. There's the 18A Blue Ya Away Artistry palette. And they have the shade uh, in row one, the next to last shade is Standing O, and that is a shimmering periwinkle. The Morphe by Pony Constellation Sky Artistry Palette. Okay, so the last two shades of row four, there is Lucid Dreams, that is a matte periwinkle, and Lavender Shower, that is a periwinkle iridescent shimmer. And also for Morphe, the Mickey and Friends Truth Be Bold Artistry Palette. And the, let's see, second shade in row four is Stun and Games, and that is a matte periwinkle. Looks more like a um, light blue. And then uh, from NYX, we have the Epic Wear Liner Stick Long Lasting Eyeliner Pencil, and that is the shade Periwinkle Pop and they call that just a periwinkle. And I th think that's it for the eye products. NYX also has a butter gloss um, in the shade Blueberry Tart, which they call a periwinkle blue. Uh, and it's interesting that their lip gloss is um, a very blue depiction of periwinkle and their eye pencil that I just mentioned was a very purpley kind of interpretation. And then finally, if you wanted to um, color your hair, uh, Lime Crime has a unicorn hair semi-permanent hair color tint in the shade Cloud, which is a periwinkle shade. Uh, and before I talk about nail polish, if I can manage to get everything off my arm here. That Tanessa Myricks does not really want to budge. You might need a uh, heavier duty makeup remover for that. So a couple other products that maybe aren't kind of as obviously periwinkle, but kind of have that blue purple shift to them, I thought I would mention. So uh, a couple of highlighters here. I have the Fenty Matchstick in the shade Confetti, which I'll just swatch with highlighters too. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So, Again, you're kind of getting a taste of the periwinkle, especially with that kind of pink and blue dancing back and forth there. Milk Makeup has a similar product. This is the Supernova Holographic Stick. A little bit more subtle. There's the Cover FX Custom Enhancer Drops in the shade Halo. This might be getting a little old, but. I think this one has more of kind of a white or blue base to it. And obviously it's kind of built up right there. So if I blend it out, hopefully you get a better representation of uh, the shade. And then I have one more kind of highlight shade. This is the Winky Lux Charm Holographic Highlighter. I think this might be like a mini. So this is a little bit more of like a cream or white base with it really, I think, leans more pink than anything. So for a true kind of periwinkle, I would say go for probably the, probably one of these three. Um, I think the Fenty maybe has the strongest um, read of periwinkle and then followed by the Halo from Cover Effects. 
And then uh, this, I guess I could have put in the eye section. This is the Stila Glitter and Glow in Perlina. I don't think they describe this as periwinkle, but you can see it does have that kind of blue and pink glitter in it. And then the last product before we get to the nails is the Dior blush in 601 hologram. So uh, that was a product they kind of re-promoted as part of their holiday collection, but it is also in their permanent line. And obviously it is a uh, pretty strong pink, um, pink coral with some glitter. I think there is a tiny bit of like bluish kind of reflect in there. It's hard to show this one. I think maybe there you can see it. So yeah, so just some different options to consider. Obviously holographic highlighters had a huge moment I think a few years ago. So you might have some of these products in your collection already. Okay, so let's talk about the nails. So what I am wearing on my nails is the Essie You Do Blue, which I think in the bottle you can see better that it has a really pretty kind of violet micro shimmer in it. The base is definitely blue, but then you have that really pretty reflect. And I can see it on my nails in person. I'm not sure if it's going to show up on camera, but anyway, that applied very nicely with two coats and it has a nice kind of wide rounded brush to it, which I really enjoy. Uh, so that is one. And then I also have two from OPI. So I have the uh, Infinite Shine variety here, which is, I guess, my preferred formula from them. Uh, so this is the shade You're Such a Budapest. And um, this I think they describe as a periwinkle purple. I think you are getting more of a purple um, in this shade. And uh, the way I kind of swatch and keep track of my uh, nail polish collection is to uh, basically paint these wheels and Originally, I was gonna put it on the blue wheel with um, these other two shades, but I decided that uh, it was more appropriate to put it on the purple. So uh, you can see that this is the sixth wheel of purples that I have, and this is only the third. So obviously I have more purples. And then with these numbers, I just um, have an index card. Um, I use a, like a CD binder, so uh, it has two sides to it. One is the side that you would put the CD in, and that is what I slip this into. And then on the back, I cut a an index card to size, and then I kind of slot it in where the, I guess the, like the little booklet goes, um, in theory. So, uh, yeah, and this, you can see I use two different sized index cards. Um, but yeah, so I put OPI You're Such a Budapest on this one. So that is that light purple. And then on this one, we have the Essie You Do Blue on this nail. And this one, which is a little bit dustier, I think, in person than it might be showing up. This is uh, Oh You Sing. This is the longest nail polish name ever. Oh You Sing, Dance, Act, and Produce. Um, so this was part of their Hollywood collection from last year, I think. So those are the two kind of more blue leaning periwinkle polishes that I have. Uh, and I guess I'll talk about some of the other nail polishes that either Allure mentioned or that I found in doing some research. So they mentioned specifically an OPI polish from, I think it was the New Orleans collection. Uh, and it was show us your tips. Um, and you can imagine what that's kind of playing off of. Um, that is described as a periwinkle shimmer, uh, and that is available in both the original and the infinite shine formulas, and it looks really 
pretty. I just couldn't really get past the name. They have a new collaboration with Xbox that they are coming out with. And there's two polishes in that line that I think could be described as periwinkle. One is can't control me and control is spelled C-T-R-L like the computer um, shortcut. Uh, and that is a pastel blue. And then there is also you had me at halo, H-A-L-O like the game. And that is a pearlescent light blue. Uh, Allure also mentioned a Sally Hansen miracle gel polish called crying out cloud. Uh, which looks a little bit more lavender. If you prefer a gel polish, a Red Carpet Manicure makes a shade called Blue Delicious. That is a periwinkle cream, and uh, that is available at Ulta, so you don't need to have any sort of special license or anything to buy that. And then Zoya makes a shade called Saint, which is a metallic periwinkle that looks pretty blue. Uh, there's a nail polish brand called Nailtopia, uh, which is supposed to be biosourced and chip free and they have a shade called hashtag self care that is a periwinkle cream and then finally in the Essie gel couture line they have a shade called perfect posture which is a periwinkle powder blue okay so we're starting with the eyes and I'm going to use the ace beauté eyeshadow amplifying base and light uh, so this has a little bit more opacity to it than the Fenty Eye Primer, which is what I typically use. So uh, to the extent I want any of these colors to really pop, I thought using a more opaque eye base would be the way to go. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure where I'm going with this. I want to try to use a few different formulas but I haven't experimented with them all together before, so I'm not entirely sure kind of how they'll behave. All right, so I'm going to take the Sigma Large Fluff E50 brush, and uh, there might be a little bit of residual powder on there. Uh, and I'm going to go into that MAC, I think it's such a tool powder kiss shadow, and I'm just going to tap that over the lid. So kind of the way I would use a light cream or white shade. And my goal here is I guess to kind of incorporate or demonstrate a few different options for incorporating this color into your makeup without obviously having to use all of them. And I don't have any corrector or concealer or anything on so uh, you know this does kind of make me look extra tired, I think, with all that blue. Okay, uh, let's go into the Lethal Cosmetics shades. So I'm gonna use the Sonia G Classic Crease and go into the Altitude shade. And I'm going to try to kind of apply that in like the crease or transition area. These shades are pretty light, so you can use them a little bit, you know, higher up, I think, than I might a darker shade. Okay, and for the main part of the lid here, uh, I'll use my Chikuhoto GSN 9 and go into that shade here, which is called Synth. And I might have to apply this with a finger or damp, but I'm going to start off with a dry brush. It's actually not too bad. I mean, it does show up. I think we might be able to kind of build up the pigment. Okay, so before I try to build it up at all, I'm going to go into that middle shade, which I think is called Stargaze. And I'm going to tap some of that onto the outer edge here. And I am getting some fallout, so I'm definitely glad that I did my, my eyes first. Okay. 
I don't think it applies as darkly on the lid as it does in the pan, but I think it definitely helps to kind of deepen the eye look, add some dimension. Okay, and then let's use the finger in the synth shade. And I want to see what happens when I wet the brush. Hopefully that shift is picking up on camera. Okay, I think we've kind of maxed out the capabilities uh, with that shade. Uh, just for fun, I guess I'll go in to the Tim Burton or um, Nightmare Before Christmas palette and pick up some of that uh, Dr. Finkel shade and just put some of that on the outer edge. I don't know that this really adds a whole lot. So I think everything else is a liquid or a cream, so I'm not as concerned with fallout. So I'll go ahead and do my base and then be back for the rest of the eye look. Okay, so we're back. So I'll try to include everything I used down below, just kind of my normal favorites, that sort of thing. So uh, I'm trying to think how I want to proceed here. So I'm very curious about the Danessa Myricks Twin Flames. Uh, so I think I might try Kind of putting this in the inner corner and then maybe a little bit on the lid so let's see here oh. don't want to put it in my actual eye so i would recommend having something to blend it out. I'm going to use this rough art number 12. It's an interesting look. So that's not really what I intended to do, to be honest. So I think what I would maybe recommend and what I would do is just put some on the back of the hand and then apply it with the brush just so you have a little bit more kind of control especially in that smaller area I think it's a little bit more opaque on this side. Whenever I've been like looking up different products or thinking about this look, I always um, think of, uh, I forget the character or the actress's name, but she's in the show Sex Education on Netflix with Jillian Anderson. And uh, she's the one who is very into aliens. That's kind of what I think of. Okay, so I'm not sure if that really kind of enhanced anything, but like I said, I'm just kind of playing around um, with some different products here. Uh, so before we do the lower lash line, I think on the upper lash line, uh, I'm going to use the 24 seven uh, glide on eye pencil from Urban Decay in the shade Psychedelic Sister. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if they still make this shade or not. So I feel like that's not transferring quite as well as I would like it to. I guess I'll try the shade Rockstar from Urban Decay. This is a little bit of a kind of darker 
darker color so you get a little bit more payoff, I think. Okay, and then I want to try just tapping a little bit of this uh, Stila Glitter and Glow in the shade Perlina. Looks like that did kind of remove some of the shadow. Okay, so for the other eye, I'll just try to put some on the back of my hand and just tap. Yeah, I think you can see there's a little bit of a bald spot on this eye, but I don't think that was a really necessary step. I just wanted to kind of see um, what it would do. All right, and for the lower lashes, I think I need to maybe incorporate a little bit more blue. So I'm going to use the J-Cat pencil in the shade Vanilla Sky. So I think I just want to apply some of that on the lower lash line. All right, so I'm going to apply mascara and then I'll be back for the cheeks and the lips. All right, so the eyes are done. I'll give you kind of a close up. They're kind of like mermaidy almost. Uh, so I think if I were to recommend anything, uh, I think I would recommend the Danessa Myricks Twin Flame followed by the Lethal Cosmetics shadows. And I think specifically that synth shade is the one that I think had the most impact. So if you were only looking to pick up one shade, I think I would recommend that one, although the other ones do kind of play nicely with it. So if you wanted to pick up a few, uh, those are some options. But uh, yeah, I think those two shades kind of gave you the most kind of very peri impact. All right, so let's do the rest of the face here. Uh, so I'll stick with the Dior blush that I swatched for you. I also applied this in my uh, full face of Dior video and it does definitely have that kind of glittery look to the face, especially up close. But you know, we're just going kind of full on glitter in this in this video so uh, I did already have bronzer and contour on my uh, cheeks before though okay and then the Fenty highlighter um, I think I'm going to just kind of try applying this with my finger I'm not sure how emollient really is I think there's definitely more of that kind of blue reflect coming through there. Uh, and then the product that's probably going to be the most interesting to apply, uh, I did already apply this once actually. This is the Fenty Matte Moiselle in Ya Dig. So this is the blue lipstick shade. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this and then I'll apply the Pat McGrath lip gloss on Actually, what we'll do first. First I'll apply just the Pat McGrath lip gloss over bare lips. So you can see kind of what that looks like. You still look like you're a little bit frostbitten, but uh, we are in, in January now, so you might wanna lean into that. All right, so going back to the Fenty lipstick. Of course, this is without lip liner or anything like that. I don't know if it's because I just had a gloss on, but they are surprisingly creamy. Uh, it does look like you just kissed a Smurf though. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm going to apply some of that lip gloss on over top. It 
So now I have glossy blue lips. Okay, so to make something that might be hopefully a little bit more wearable, I think what I had in mind for this is, I mean, you could go a few different ways with this. I'm going to apply this Bite lipstick. This is in the shade Sugar Buns. So just kind of your neutral pinky. shade. And then on top of that, I'm going to go back in with the, the Pat McGrath. And for this, I'm going to just tap it on the back of my hand. I mean, it's still definitely kind of a cooler toned color. And if you wanted to keep it a little bit more neutral, I guess you could start off with a warmer lip and then go in with the uh, kind of blue lip gloss on top. Okay, so that's going to do it for uh, my very Perry inspired periwinkle uh, look. Uh, again, I think if you're going to pick up anything to kind of embrace the color of the year, I would definitely recommend uh, some of those eye products or uh, the nail polish. I think those are probably the easiest ways to incorporate it into your uh, makeup look. Uh, you certainly can get away with it on the cheeks and the lips, but it is, I think, a little bit more difficult to pull it off without looking like you're either, you know, dead or spacey, I guess. Uh, so yeah, so that's going to do it for this first video of 2022. Please do subscribe if you enjoyed it. And until next time, I hope you guys are staying very safe and healthy, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.